What's up guys, hope you're doing well. And in this video, we're gonna kind of continue the, the gas issue uh, problems. Now, I would say probably eight out of 10 of the, of the mowers and tractors that come in with a bad or rough running engine, eight out of 10 times, it's a fuel problem. It's either bad fuel or something going on. And so we're gonna talk about gas and ethanol. And I have another mower uh, very had the very similar issue to what happened with that uh, in that last video where we talked we did the fuel pump video and this is a completely different mower and I'd worked on it and I was just test driving it and it started running bad and then uh, later on we're going to talk about uh, some myths about the gas and octane and everything and uh, but mostly we're going to just talk about fuel issues so First off, let's talk about ethanol. Ethanol kind of, I, I'll say in this other this uh, clip that I'm about to show you how it eats away rubber, and people will say, oh, it doesn't eat away. Well, what it really does, it dry rots everything. It dry rots uh, these rubber hoses. And you'll see that in this video now um, where I was driving this mower, had some issues with it. I thought everything was good as I was test driving it. And all of a sudden I started having some issues and as I investigated further, I realized I need, I had some uh, dry rot going on on these fuel lines and I ended up just replacing the fuel lines. I'm going to show you that now. This is the same mower. Um, as I started to drive it, I drove it a little bit to test it out and then it started hiccuping and, and missing and everything else. Not really missing, it was more of just like starting to run bad and I throttled it down and it would kind of taper off. and when a mower is doing that, when it starts running kind of hiccuping and bad, that's a, usually a fuel issue. Okay, if it's usually an electronic issue, now I'm not going to say it's all the time 100%. You know, there's always special cases. You know, it could be a key switch or a control module acting up or whatever. Most of the times when it's, you know, kind of spitting, sputtering and everything, um, you know, it's a fuel issue. So what I did when I throttled it down and I idled it back to the to the shop, uh, that let me know I either had you know like I said you know fuel issue, and that could also be a venting issue. Like so you know your cap could be venting. Now uh, this is the vent line, this smaller line right over here, and what I ended up doing I'm going to show you some footage because just to go ahead and confirm uh, that I had good gas because I was looking at the filter. And it didn't have that, you know, greenish yellowish tin. It kind of looked more like water and the fuel was, tank was almost empty. So I went ahead and just drained all the fuel. And I'm going to show you some footage because the um, it was a lot of debris in what I drained. And the fuel filter still looked clean. Now what it was is that ethanol in these fuels eats away at these rubber hoses. So first thing I did is I removed this cap. It just takes a little 10 millimeter. Um, I should have taken it off for this video, but anyway, I took the hose line off right over here, uh, going to the fuel pump, the main one going to the fuel pump. This is the pressure pump. This is like the pump going to the crankcase, and this is coming from the fuel tank. So I took it off here and bring it around over here and put it down into a bucket, and then what I do is I'll add some air pressure to the tank. I'll put my hand right here and put my air nozzle and just add a little pressure and start you know feeding gas to drain the tank and also what I was doing was just kind of seeing how the flow was going and it looked like it, the line was probably a little clogged looked like it was draining so I decided at that point um, I didn't know if it was you know just clogged up fuel line or clogged up um, vent hose line I went ahead and just replaced all the fuel lines and the vent lines with new so I got new lines coming through here fresh new fuel filter coming down through here uh, replace this line because they were all just kind of very brittle uh, withering away because that's what happens with that ethanol over time it, uh, the gas just eats away at this, these rubber hoses so I even replaced this line right here going from the fuel pump down over here to the carburetor and uh, came out here to test it and now it's running good I've already made several passes uh, down through here uh, at full throttle with the blades on and it's doing a lot better so it could have been clogged up fuel line. It could have been a vent line. But anyway, they were both kind of so brittle. I just went ahead and replaced that. And that solved my issue. 
here's all the debris that was in that gas you can see in the bottom of that bucket just coming from these lines and even though that filter looks relatively clean that was just all coming from this line right here and that ethanol that can also not only dry rot those uh, fuel line hoses it can also be a culprit to what happens to those fuel pumps you know you saw in that last video it's just kind of like a real rubbery uh, diaphragm in that fuel pump that ethanol is going to kind of eventually dry rot that as well and that could you know mess up your motor now if you can get ethanol free gas that's great um, your engine's going to be okay uh, is, you know running the ethanol just I would be prepared to have to replace that fuel pump and those fuel line hoses probably once a year another thing about this fuel issues are, is that people don't realize what's going on is a lot of times that ethanol will also eat away at the rubber o-ring on the uh, gas cap and I would say I mean nine out of ten mowers have trash sand grass and debris inside of the fuel tank it's almost a guaranteed thing that's going to happen I'll shine a flashlight in the fuel tank and right there at the pickup tube or at the bottom of the tank sloshing around is a bunch of grass and debris and I'll take photos and show people and if it's not real bad I can just kind of take like a suction pump and suck it all out but sometimes it's real bad it's got up into the fuel lines and it's causing an issue a clog and very similar to the tank ventilation issue it will uh, clog up a line where a little bit of gas can go through the line and the engine may run fine for about five or ten minutes and then the fuel pump just cannot pull the gas fast enough especially as you're revving up increasing those RPMs, it can't pull the gas fast enough. Now let's talk about some uh, octane myths. Your engine is not a high compression engine. You only really need higher octane for high compression engines, race engines and everything. And the octane rating doesn't, isn't talking about how much power. There's a lot of myth, myths there about, oh, it burns slower, hotter, has more power, whatever. Uh, let me explain real quick. I'm going to use some very uh, generic uh, um, pictures here and explain what's going on. All right, so stroke number one, we have fuel and air coming into the combustion chamber through the intake valve as the piston moves down. And then as the piston goes up to compress the fuel, we're going to pretend we have 24 units of gasoline being compressed with the air. Now right here we have a little explosion that's called detonation right there. So what that happens is it burns away some of the fuel, but it also create some downward pressure and this all happens in microscopic seconds a little bit of downward pressure but it also burns away some of the fuel so now we have let's say it burns away seven units of the gas of the 24 now we're left with 17 units plus we had some resistance from that detonation so now we're going to have an uneven burn and less less fuel for the power stroke finally we have ignition to, in the during the power stroke now we have only 17 units of gas left as it's pushing the piston down. A higher octane fuel would have, re would have been less prone to that uh, pre-ignition detonation. Finally, we have the exhaust stroke, the final stroke, and then the whole process starts all over again. There's some other videos. I'll put a link in the description that does a far better job of explaining that. Uh, this was just kind of like a very bare bones uh, generic explanation of that. Another uh, common myth is like, you know, we're talking about storing your fuel. You know, this gas um, doesn't, they don't, it doesn't store very long. I mean, depending on what part of the country you're in, I like back when I was in Tennessee, it stored, I, I feel like I could store gas for a year and it was fine without any even stabilizer. Down here in Florida, I give it three months tops and it's very questionable. And it seems like diesel down here is also bad, like it won't store nearly as long. And the common myth is that diesel will just, oh, it just lasts forever and ever and ever. Under ideal conditions, I'd give it six months to a year at tops, but you still need to treat it. And you guys with the diesel tractors, you need to you know crank up those diesel tractors and you need to run them. Don't run them real low RPMs and everything or trying to run them cooler. You need to every once in a while, you know, run them up. You need to run them, get, let it get hot to burn all that stuff out of the exhaust. 
but you need to uh, also think about that fuel needs to be replenished and, and flushed out. So um, always have to try your best to burn up that fuel or, or do something, treat it with some stabilizer made for diesel because uh, it's not going to, you know, the common myth, we see it all the time. I mean, this is almost all the time a diesel tractor comes in with an engine running bad. It's either it's a clogged injector or something due to some bad fuel. I mean, I've seen everything from lizards to frogs in the fuel tank. I don't know how the heck they get in there, but they do. I've seen ants and things in gasoline. I don't, you don't know what's going on and how this stuff gets into this gas cans and Maybe it's just when people are filling them up, you know, or, or also like the uh, O-ring or the gasket on the gas cap, like we talked about, they wither away over time. And as that tank ventilation is sucking air in through that gas cap and you're in dusty, you know, conditions, you're mowing grass out in the field, whatever, and it's just sitting there creating a vacuum, pulling all that dirt and debris into your gasoline or into your diesel. All right, so I'm gonna wrap this video up. Hope this helped you guys out. It's just a common thing people neglect, not thinking about the condition of their fuel. Um, in my next videos, I'm gonna be showing you guys uh, lots of different things on the hydros. Uh, just got through rebuilding a bunch of spindles uh, for the Z, uh, uh, Z900 series uh, mowers, the most common spindles. I'm gonna show you how you guys can do that real cheap and easy. Instead of paying 200, 250 for a new spindle, you can rebuild it a lot cheaper. But I uh, hope you'll like the video, but most importantly, subscribe. And pretty soon I'm gonna have a Patreon page um, that I'm starting where all the, where I'm gonna have exclusive content, more in depth, more uh, informative videos on there. And that way you guys can support the channel and it'll free me up where I can, you know, um, probably get, make a lot more content for you guys and I won't have to work so many hours. I can do more work for you guys making content. I got so many things I want to share with you guys, but I really appreciate the support. I love all the uh, comments. Everybody's really appreciative. I'm loving it. So, but hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.